What's up beautiful people? I'm Erin and this is Erin On Demand and today's video is all about iPhone or smartphone gear to up your video quality. I am one who truly believes that you need to work with what you got, okay? And when it comes to creating content, having high quality videos, high quality photos is very necessary but that doesn't mean you have to go out and spend a ton of money on fancy cameras and fancy equipment that you don't even probably know how to use. So instead of slowing you down by, you know, using a DSLR or a crazy camera, let's just use our phones. And I'm gonna show you the best settings, the best gear that I love to use with my iPhone to where sometimes y'all can't even tell that we're actually using a phone. This is the first piece of equipment I wanna show you and it is a phone tripod. Any smartphone can be used on this and I love it because you can do vertical videos. So if you're doing Instagram stories, if you wanna do some time lapses of yourself to post on, you know, as a TikTok or a reel, um, you can shoot vertical videos and then this turns and you can also do horizontal videos. So if you wanna shoot YouTube videos or things for your website, you can do it in horizontal. So this is probably one of our most used pieces of equipment. We take this on vacations so we can take pictures of ourselves. Um, we use these in our offices. We pretty much take a phone tripod with us everywhere. So this is number one on the list. All right, second on the list is another tripod. This is actually better for vlogging or on the go content. The phone tripod that's a little bit larger is too big to really travel with. If you wanna throw your camera um, tripod in your purse, this is a great option. You can sit it on the tabletops, you can sit it wherever, and it's easily mobile to vlog with. So I love this option if you are on the go with your phone and need to vlog. Now, if you wanna up your audio quality, which if you are doing on the go content, you do wanna make sure that when you're walking and talking that there's no wind or you know lots of noise interference. So I highly recommend this microphone. It is the Rode Wireless Go 2 mic and you can slip it right on top of this tripod, which is so cool, and plug it into your phone. Now, if you have a iPhone, you will need a iPhone adapter because this is a headphone jack that comes on here. And then you can just clip the mic onto you and use this microphone. The sound is going to be so much better than the iPhone sound, and honestly, a bulk of good video content is having high quality sound. I don't know if you know this, but most people can make it through a video with bad video quality but really good sound versus bad sound and good video quality. So do not underestimate the importance of good audio. Next on the list is this really cool gimbal. Now, y'all, this takes it up a few notches from the vlog tripod because it doubles as a vlog tripod, it's super comfortable to hold, but it also is a stabilizer. And this is really important if you are doing on-the-go content, you want your shots to be smooth. So when you're moving this, it doesn't move. So if you were doing a walk and talk type of thing, it would not be bumpy as if you were just holding even a tripod, a regular phone tripod, or your camera in your hand. So I highly recommend this for that. Now, it does have some really cool features. So if you want to shoot social media videos, cooking videos, whatever kind of videos in vertical, you can shoot in vertical and there is a button on here that all you have to do is press and it will turn to horizontal. So you can shoot YouTube videos, videos for your website, and it just makes the content creation process smoother. Another feature we love about this gimbal is that it has face tracking. Now, this is really important if you are shooting reels, if you're dancing, it is able to move to where you are and that is so cool. Next up is this Deskview T2 teleprompter and I don't know where I've been all of my life and having a background in news and journalism, I know about teleprompters, but for some reason, I just realized that I need one. So um, I use this teleprompter to record, you know, sponsored videos, any type of content where I really need to get the information down packed. And sometimes even just these regular sit down videos, if I create a script, I feed it in the teleprompter and it makes it so easy. So what you do is you put your iPhone in here to actually show the words on the screen. This, you have to download the app that comes with this in order to 
feed the teleprompter the words but it also comes with a phone clamp so if you don't have a dslr camera or a camera to mount this onto it has a phone clamp that you can use your phone to actually record the video and if you have an old iphone or an old device that you can use to to feed the teleprompter and download the app it's kind of a double win. So you can either use this specifically to have your iPhone show the words and then mount this onto your camera, or you can have your camera as the uh, video device and use another device, like if you have someone who you live with, use their device to actually feed the prompter. So this is a really cool tool. I've been loving using it. I haven't had it for a very long time, but since I've been using it, it works amazing. But a little tip about the teleprompter, I would actually not recommend this for very beginners on YouTube because you don't want it to seem like you're reading. So I would, if you are interested in getting a teleprompter, take some time, practice with it before you start using it on a regular basis to make sure your reading really flows smoothly. Now, this next thing might seem kind of petty, but these lens wipes are the best lens wipes. And I have noticed and seen so many people's photo content, video content that shot with their phone is blurry simply because they didn't take the time to wipe their lens. So please make sure you wipe your lens. It can be with these lens wipes, these are amazing. Or you can just use a microfiber cloth to make sure your lens on your front camera and your back camera is nice and clean. It is going to make your video quality so much better. Okay, last up, let's hit on some settings. Now these are some basic settings that I feel work really well for video content that I personally use. So if you go into formats, you wanna make sure it's in most compatible and not high efficiency. When it's in high efficiency, it makes this weird file type that I don't know, I think it's only an Apple file. So make sure it's in most compatible so it's compatible on different devices. If you drag it into your editing software or you know onto your computer, your computer will know how to read the file. Another thing that I have in my settings is I record my video in 1080p at 30 frames per second. You can record in 4K. That is what you know we love about these new phones. But if you do record in 4K for the best quality video, it is going to suck up your data, okay? So I don't record in 4K, um, but that's obviously up to you. Another thing that you won't want to have checked in your settings is the HDR video for high efficiency. That may cause some overexposure when you go in to edit, so it may look a little different when you drag it into your editing software. So just make sure that that isn't checked for you. Okay, back to the main settings. Um, I always have my grid turned on. This is really important, especially if you are a, you know, not the best of a photographer or don't really know how to center yourself in a frame or don't really know how to frame photos. So I always go by the rule of thirds, putting the subject inside of where two of the lines cross or intersect. So that way you really kind of can, you know, even if you aren't a professional photographer, you can make your pictures pop and look like something. Another thing that I would recommend having on in your camera settings is live photo because it's gonna take uh, kind of like a video photo and if you go in there, you can create boomerangs, you can also create, you can also go in there and capture one frame out of the live photo to give yourself some more options. So. I would recommend having live photo on just so that you have some more range with the types of pictures you post. Another setting that I have checked is mirror front camera. So I don't know if y'all have ever experienced this, but when you go to take a selfie and you click the, self, the camera button to capture the picture, and then when you go to look at it, it flips. I used to hate that and iPhone came out with a feature where it no longer flips. So if you have that setting checked, then the photo will look exactly like how it looks when you take the picture. Kind of like how Instagram or Snapchat do freeze frames instead of like flipping the photo. So I have that checked just so that it doesn't flip the photo back. So that is about it. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you are interested in using your iPhone more, just really maximizing the use out of it because these are some 
pretty expensive devices and they have the capabilities to do a lot because let's be honest they do not update anything but the camera on these new phones and to prove it to you there is a cinematic feature on the iphone 13 that you can actually do with the iphone 12 which you see us doing right now. This is iPhone footage that you're looking at. And I just want you to know and to prove the point that you do not have to spend a ton of money on gear or on a fancy camera to make high quality video or photo content. You just gotta know what you're doing. And that's what I'm here for. All right, you guys, if you like this video, you are welcome to join the fam and I will see you on the next one. Peace.